Thank you very much, Riv. What's up, guys? I want to welcome Voiboy and Dominate to the desk. Guys, congratulations on the win. This is now, uh, you've now beaten both the top two teams now, Dig and LMQ. Uh, you guys are freaking awesome. Like, wh what keeps you guys from just like winning all the rest of the games? Because you can clearly beat the top. Um, I don't know, man. Like, our record's like three and seven or something right now. Yeah. We, I think, except for like one game versus Cloud9, all our games have been relatively close. Like, there, like those games where we'll have a lead. It seems like we're doing really well, and then we'll just do something really silly. Like, just throw it in one instance, like versus Dig yesterday. Um, so yeah, we're just going through some problems. Obviously, if we weren't, we'd be at the top of the standings. Sure. But I think in these matches that we're losing, sometimes like very painstakingly, uh, you can see that we have like glimmers of glimmers of brilliance. It's not we're not quite there, but if yeah. we can work on that and just try to iron out our play and avoid those like game blundering moves, then I think that we can just get to the top where we want to be. Um, we beat Dig, we beat LMQ, we've been giving all these teams like pretty good games. I think it's just a little bit a little bit of a step up and I think we'll be able to consistently take games off of pretty much anyone. So yeah. Yeah, that's the plan. Exactly. And honestly it feels like a lot of people are actually noticing that you guys are like right there almost all the time. I actually have a tweet from Double If that he brought out uh, a little while ago, we can pull it one up. He's saying, you, know, you guys are playing so well in scrims all the time, like why can't you just keep playing aggressively here and get all the wins, you know, in the matches? Yeah, definitely. What do you think about that? I definitely think it's just like a mindset thing. Like at LCS, uh, if there's like a 50-50, we're just normally like on the passive side of it. Where is where in scrims, if there's a 50-50, we're always trying to push our limits, trying to go for it, and we just need to play with more of that mindset in LCS, and I think everything will go better. Go. Yeah, I speaking agree with your, that. Speaking of your mindset, coming into picks and bans in this game, uh, you guys seem to get a fair bit of stuff. Braum has been 100% pick ban in LCS, uh, and you got the first pick, Lucian. Were you surprised you were able to get you know, the Cassidy and the Braum and the Lucian all on the same team? Um, well, yesterday, Cassidy was left through and just not even picked or banned in two of the games, and we kind of figured LMQ might have a, a counter pick ready, but I was... Yeah, we didn't first pick it because we still valued Lucian over it, especially because we banned out two of Vasily's main AD carries, so just put him on something he's a little bit less comfortable on. Um, and then, yeah, Kassan is something that I played forever. I knew he'd probably be countering it. I was kind of guessing it might be a Pantheon. And early game, after like those few four-man Rome squads, I was I was a bit behind, but still managed to get back to the point where Kassan can become relevant, and we just were able to clean the game up. Yeah, and yes. kind of the beginning of you guys getting relevant, we have a replay from the mid lane fight where you finally start to get going. Let's pull this up on the screen, actually, right now. And Voibo, kind of walk me through. You guys are down three kills to zero at this point, yeah, but yeah. you guys find a window. So we knew Pantheon's flash was down. We were calling it. We saw him on the ward coming through, and Dom was just like, this guy's flash down. Like, I can get it. I can get the flash cocoon. He goes for it. We nailed the kill. We just insta-burst him, and then Mora was also getting stunned. He tried to use his shield on Pantheon to save him, but we just killed him, and then we got another free stun on Mora. So I TP'd in just in case they tried to commit fully to the fight, but we just ended up getting two free kills, getting Dragon, and just taking control of the map after that point. Was that kind of the game plan then when you guys were behind, like against this roaming squad and a pretty early game focused team? Was it turtle it out, look for the picks at some point, they're going to get too aggressive and just wait for that moment? Yeah, I definitely. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that like our comp out scaled theirs. Yeah, sorry for cutting you off, boy. But um, <laughs> our, our, our comp out scales there, them, especially with Kassanen. Kassanen's able to like build a lot of armor items and still do a decent amount of damage and have a chase potential. So if you look at Void's build at the end of the game, he had Frozen Heart, Frozen <laughs> Fist, Randuins, and Tabby. So uh, we knew that if it got into a late game scenario, we'd be able to pressure them. We'd all be able to like stack armor and they wouldn't be able to hold us. So eventually, um, if we just got through the early game, we'd be able to outscale. Some of their champions are actually kind of mixed damage champs, right? You've got Corky on one side, Jax over there as well, maybe even Morgana to a certain extent. Was there any concern that's like, well, we got to make sure we keep these guys down, or was it like we just know with like a bunch of randoms we'll be okay? Uh, I definitely think that uh, we knew that we'd be fine because with the Frozen Heart, you are kind of able to mitigate some of that damage, even if it is magic damage from like Jax's Empower and his ultimate. You still are able to mitigate that with the Frozen Heart, the attack speed's low. Um, also, we had three randoms at the end of the game, so... Even though they do have magic damage, it's kind of, uh, besides for Corky, it's kind of like auto attack based. Mm -hmm. So we, we thought that we'd be fine if we just stack armor and we just are able to get into a fight that's like 5v5. Yeah, and speaking of the 5v5 fight, we have the bot lane kill on Ackerman that exploded into a big team fight. It was really when you guys took control of the game. Uh, we can pull this clip up on the screen. Dom, actually, uh, walk me through this one.
of course, it says Void Boy's yeah. initiating, but go for it. Uh, so Void's going in here, and he's calling. I can slow him forever. I have got a frozen fist. Uh, just chase him down. So we're, we're like, okay, everyone start collapsing because we know that this could turn into a fight. We know Pantheon is ulti. So we chase him down. We start going on, on Jax. It's kind of hard to kill for us at this point. And once we see the Pantheon ult, we, we call that Pantheon is extremely squishy at this point. He has full damage. So I cocoon him, and we immediately turn to Pantheon. We try to kill him. We uh, get a Brahm stun on him. He's able to get off next to no damage in the fight. Then we're able to snowball that into three more kills and then drag him. So you guys did like a phenomenal job of just kind of saying, okay, we feel like we're strong enough now and turning it on. Did you know that, like, at, sort of at what point during, you know, champ selector loading screen of the game were you like, okay, we know that, you know, at 35 it's good to go? Uh, it wasn't necessarily a point. It was just kind of situationally we were waiting for an opening, and the opening was when we made that gank mid and Pantheon was forced to burn flash. We knew that we needed to capitalize on that because we were just slowly losing the game. They were getting map control. We had to give them, like I think, maybe two dragons in a row. So we told ourselves, all right, uh, if we can see like a play on Pantheon, we're going to go for it. And he ended up cutting through mid. We had a ward on him, and I just flash cocooned him, and we ended up like snowballing that into two kills and drag. Yeah. So, so then LQ, uh, I kind of want to keep talking about this because it's, it's, it's a fun composition, right? Mid Pantheon, a whole bunch of AD champions. Uh, if you're in LMQ, LMQ shoes and you you know just lost this game and you had this like early game comp, um, what would you do differently to make that work like the second time around? Go for it, boy. Um, I think honestly, do it again. Like it's not a bad comp. It's a good strategy. The biggest thing that could have happened is if I died multiple times. The first time they tried to gank me, they used two flashes. I got kind of lucky. I got my flash off, and they weren't able to secure that kill. The second time, they made another good play. They killed me. At that point, Pantheon was so ahead of me, I could barely even farm. And honestly, if they just maintained that lead, they were getting dragons. They had map control. They just had to avoid getting picked, because that's the only way we can easily get back into the game. We can probably stall out, but the longer the game goes, when they have map control and they're getting free dragons, the the bigger the bigger the bigger Big, the bigger the differential is between the two teams, so it just makes it harder for us to even get those picks. Because like, if we waited five more minutes, that initiation on Pantheon might not work because their whole team would be stronger and ready to ready to capitalize on it. So I think they just had to avoid making plays like those, and then obviously just yeah try to play the game out as they were doing it because they had they were they were pressuring us pretty hard. Like I could barely farm it when Pan when Pantheon came back mid. He had like a BF sword and a brutalizer and the jungler and the support were just roaming everywhere. It was actually a pretty dif dif difficult game for us. But um yeah, honestly, they they could have they could they could have maintained their lead and closed it out. Yeah. But you guys did a good job to weather the storm and come back. And 3 and 7 now as you mentioned at the start. You guys face Cloud9 and CLG next week. But as far as you guys beaten up on good teams, it should be completely fine. How are you actually going to be preparing for this next week with your problems and your mistakes in mind that you've been improving against LMQ? I think it's it's really hard for us to fix our mistakes, primarily because our scrim records are always so good. So we'll come into every week just winning maybe like 75, 80% of our scrims, and we'll think that, oh, okay, all of our problems are gone now. Like We're playing aggressively, we have uh, much better champion pools this week, and everything's going to turn around. Um, and so far, we've just been disappointed Like every week after our performances. We watch our games over, and it just looks like we're doing nothing. It just looks like we're just waiting to lose the game. Um, so I definitely think that going into next week, we're going to... We're gonna remember this game. We're gonna remember how to how to play aggressively. Like I know personally, something that I've been doing now is just getting more emotionally pumped up into the game. Like I've been listening to like music before the games and just trying to get myself in the mindset. Like yeah, I'm just gonna go out there. I'm gonna to try to like make plays and try to get stuff done. And I think that that's like what's what's working for me. I think like ev everyone's just kind of gonna kind of feed off each other's energy. When team morale is high, I think that we'll we'll all just like feel in the zone. And and if we can be as confident as we are in scrims in LCS, then I think that. That would be like the biggest thing for us. Yeah, it'd be good to see you guys playing continually aggressive. Maybe the MVP can be the final countdown for you guys when you go for the games. Guys, we're going to take a quick break when, when we've still got more games to, uh, to come, of course, throughout the days. Three and a half minutes, Complexity is going to take to the Rift and Battle Team Solomid. Don't go anywhere.